originally RCWs were one of the first birds listed as endangered and under the Endangered Species Act. It was recognized pretty early on that, that these birds were in trouble and, and needed some help. Hi, my name is Zach Henshaw. I'm a forestry and wildlife biologist with the Jones Center at Itchaway. We're performing red cockaded woodpecker nest monitoring today. So our red cockaded woodpecker recovery program started in about 1999, so this is roughly our 26th season. Nesting season generally starts kind of the beginning of April. We monitor each one of these territories on a weekly basis and then we continue monitoring those nests that are successful until about mid-June. So to go around and monitor these clusters and these cavities, we've kind of got niche tools that we use. The first of which is what we call our peeper camera. That allows us to actually put this camera inside of the cavity and be able to monitor birds that way. Once we find a nest and it's time to band birds, we use an arborist belt. So we'll attach ourselves to the tree and then use these stackable aluminum ladders called Swedish ladders. We'll put those up against the tree, secure them to the tree, and then actually climb up to the cavity where we can extract the birds. To extract the chicks, we use a specialized device made of rubber tubing that lassos around the body of the chick. We're actually Putting the capture device in the cavity blind, uh, we can't see where the birds are. So you really kind of just have to feel around. It takes a lot of touch to be able to actually safely catch these birds and pull them out of the cavity. We really want to minimize the time that these birds are out of the cavity. So we want to be able to extract them pretty quickly, get them down there, band them and then climb back up and get them back in the cavity in a, in a reasonable amount of time. These birds, they're the only woodpecker in North America that exclusively uses living pine trees. So they are non-migratory. They live in these trees all year long. And if you have frequent fires kind of coming through your habitat, a living tree is a little less susceptible to burn up than say like a, a snag. As a wildlife manager, really all of this information ultimately just feeds directly back into my management actions and kind of how I manage our population. 